Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about linting in VS Code, and we're gonna be using ESLint. Now, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is head to the extensions. We're gonna type in ESLint. Now, ESLinter, if you don't know, is a really nice JavaScript linter, and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and install ESLint. This is the one you can see, it's very popular, 1 million downloads, it works very well. There's a lot of really nice stuff about this package or just linting in VS Code in general. And that's one of my pet peeves about Sublime Text is really just how difficult it can be to get linting working um, because the interface doesn't really give you a whole lot of hints if it's not working. In this particular case, VS Code is going to yell at you and basically tell you what's going on if it's not working. So the first things first is we need to install this. Then we want to install ESLint either on our workspace or we want to install it globally. Now I'm going to install it globally for the uh, case of this video. Now to do this, you do need NPM, which is Node. So you want to install Node.js if you're using JavaScript. And what we want to do is we want to hit Control and then what would be the tilde key or the backtick and we can paste in npm install hyphen g eslint. As long as we have node installed in our computer, we need to hit enter. This is going to install eslint globally into our computer. Okay, as you can see, it then installed eslint. Now per these instructions, what we do need is an eslint rc file into our project. Now this is a React Native project, but despite that, I don't have an ESLint file in here yet, so now is a good time to create one. And we can do so using the command ESLint hyphen hyphen init. And now this is going to ask you some questions. I apologize if the text is a little bit smaller for this. It's not as easy to bump up here. Let me see if I can. And that's just gonna make the whole interface bigger. Uh, but either way, I'll, I'll shrink it down in a second. So how would you like to configure ESLint? Well, you could say, let's use a popular style guide. Let's answer some questions about your style, inspect your JavaScript files. What's really nice about this ESLint init is basically it's gonna get you going how you want to have the linter register errors in your code. I'm gonna use a popular style guide. Now the one I really love is the Airbnb style guide. I use this all the time. I do in fact turn some things off occasionally, but for the point of this video, it should be all right. Click okay. Do you use React? In this particular instance, I am, so yes. JavaScript, and you could have selected any of those. And what we wanna do is just wait as this installs ESLint, ESLint plugin React, ESLint JSX Ally, and the config Airbnb, which is a big one. So let's just hang out while it does that. Okay, as you can see, we got a whole bunch of stuff, whole bunch of stuff installed. And let's check it out. We now have an ESLint.js file. We could have had an ESLint uh, JSON file as well. But as you can see, nothing crazy here. Extends Airbnb, plugins are these. Okay, so super cool. Let's actually hit to the problems tab here. And look at this, no problems so far. So let me shrink this whole thing down a little bit again. And we can do control tilde. To hide our terminal you might have to hit it once or twice because it brings up terminal first and now let's check this out I'm going to go ahead and delete a semicolon here and you'll notice nothing's complaining in fact and there's no errors down here if we were to head to this where it says ESLint down here we can click on this and you can see if you scroll up a little bit, it says to use ESLint in this workspace, please install ESLint using install ESLint or globally, blah, blah, blah. You need to reopen the workspace. So what I'm gonna do is uh, reopen this workspace because currently it's not going to work. Now, an easy way to do this, honestly, is just do Command Q, close it. Click it, reopen it, fire it up. You know, one of the best things, obviously, about VS Code is just simply how fast it is compared to some other text editors. And just like that, we do have ESLint working. We have some crazy red underlinings of things that it doesn't like. 
Now let's check this out. Some of these are not super valid, right? Some of these are basically saying, okay, styles is used before it was defined. It's pretty common, especially in this sort of use case to define your styles below the component. So a rule like that is certainly one I would consider turning off. And then we have another one, basically trailing space is not allowed. This is a good one to have because, well, when we'll see in a second, when we get to sort of auto fixing some of our problems, it's gonna remove any sort of extraneous stuff. And likewise here, it's complaining about that semicolon that we're missing. So let's actually start configuring this. We can head to our ESLint, our JS file. Now you could have used an ESLint.json as well. In fact, I think that's probably the most common so for instance, let's head to our file and we hover over this one that I really don't agree with, right? This is going to say ESLint not allowed uh, files with extensions JS. Basically it's complaining that we don't want to use JSX in files that are not .jsx. Uh, this is one I turn off pretty much all the time and you'll notice every single time it has an error, it's going to give you the rule that it's breaking. So for instance, if we wanted to modify this particular rule, we could always come into our ESLint file and configure it as such. We can have a comma here. We can say rules. Now you're gonna to wanna to look up the exact rules for a lot of this stuff, but rules takes an array and inside of that array, we can paste in our rule in a string, which is react forward slash JSX file name extension. And then we can say, well, we could turn this off entirely just by saying the property value of zero here. Now in rules, the property of rules is going to be an object. The first property in that object is we're just going to paste in our react JSX extension file name colon, and we can give this a value of zero simply just to turn this rule off. And now let's head back to our app. Now when I save this, you'll see even before I saved it, the squiggly line is gone. And again, let's turn this one off too, where we can come in here, check this out, say no use before define, copy this, head over here, paste this in, just like this. And you know, this ESLint file isn't part of uh, this ESLint file isn't part of VS Code or anything. This is ESLint's syntax and turning everything off here. So if you need to consult sort of the documentation for this, head to ESLint's website. But as far as the uh, implementation of ESLint in VS Code goes, it's really super cool here. Now, what we wanna do is actually turn on auto-completing because I certainly like that. I like it when it saves. If you have your rules set up exactly the way you want them to, having it auto fix everything when you save a file can be just insanely, insanely time saving. So let's head to our preferences here. This is really the first time we're getting into preferences. We're gonna click code, preferences, settings. Now in this case, we wanna type in lint. Now, let me get rid of the editor so we can have this a little bit bigger. And the searching in this settings is really super nice because it really allows us to get to what we want to. And then each setting is categorized by some sort of accordion here. Now this interface is not necessarily as visually nice as Adam's, but it's certainly better than Sublime Text because it follows the same sort of stuff, but it gives you at least an interface and it makes things easier on you. So we can see we have ESLint settings here. We could have just searched for ESLint, but it's nice to see all this stuff. And, and what I wanna look for down here is ESLint auto fix on save. Now when we hover over any given setting, it has a pencil next to it where we can click and we can set it to true or false. So it's not like it's giving you no interface and you have to type out all of this, uh, this JSON essentially. We can type in true here and it automatically adds it to our own user settings. Now I can save this, command W to get out and let's save this file. Watch something really cool happen. Uh, one thing you'll focus on is maybe this parenthesis here. We could save this. Not only do we have no more red, but this parenthesis has now jumped in here. So as you can see here, ESLint has fixed everything it's able to fix easily, right? And the stuff that it hasn't been able to fix is, let's see this, hello. 
and basically it's saying hello is defined but never used. So what it's not gonna do is it's not gonna go out and delete this import for us, even though we're not using it anywhere in here. And that's quite all right because we don't want v we don't want ESLint uh, getting that into our code. So check it out. This is ESLint linting in VS Code. There's a ton of other linting packages. You can check them out. They all function very similarly because VS Code. This is just how VS Code handles linting. You can see that we have any errors. They're going to pop up down here with this X. We can click this, and it's going to show us the exact error right here. What file it's in? We can double click it. It'll take us right to that line. This is just super nice. I mean, this is this is really as nice as it gets as far as linting. The auto auto fix on save, the jumping to the lines, the showing you exact all of your errors, just really great stuff. So this is ESLint in VS Code. Check it out, install it, use it if you're using this kind of stuff. ESLint's gonna save your life. So thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you've liked these free tutorials, head to store.leveluptutorials.com and purchase something, become a subscriber. Either way, help out any way you can so I can keep creating these free tutorials alongside paid series and premium content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.